Hey friends, it's Lauren Taylor here on the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel and I'm grateful to have you here with me today for a Twinkle Light Light Up card. I also have my sentiment stock and my stamp set and of course the world's best foam tape all from Pear Blossom Press. I'm going to be using some of my Spellbinders products with today's cards. I'll be using Better Press Plates and coordinating dies or coordinating stencils and I'm going to be doing foiling and letter press or better press with these different plates and a little bit of watercoloring when we get there. I'm going to start with my foiling. So I have the Spellbinders Cosmos Backdrop Press Plate and the Coordinating Stencil. But what's really cool about press plates is that you can also foil them on the Glimmer Hot Foil system. So I'm using some silver foil from my stash and I'm trimming a piece to fit the size of my press plate. So that way I can run it through my machine and my system without any issues. I'm actually going to be foiling onto one of my Black Perfect Sentiment cardstock. It is measured four by five and a quarter, if I remember correctly. And it will be a little smaller than A2 in size, and it's smaller than the plate, but that's absolutely fine. We're going to just trim it down to fit on our A2 card when we're all done with our foiling and stenciling. So here you can see that beautiful silver foil just foiled perfectly on my black Perfect Sentiment cardstock, and we're going to move on to stenciling. I have my waffle flower set up. I have the silicone mat and the grip mat, and I placed my cardstock onto the grip mat, and I'll be using the almost all of the stencils in this set. I think I skipped just one. I believe it's the third stencil. So this is the first one. And I'm gonna be grabbing some interference ink pads because I really wanted a subtle color on this black cardstock. So I'm starting with Milk Chocolate Roses and I'm just using a blending brush to pick up that ink and blending through the stencil onto the cardstock. Now I know it looks kind of an orangey color, but because this is an interference ink pad and I'm applying it to black cardstock, instead of that brown orangey color, it's actually going to look kind of pinkish, like the color on the top of my ink pad cover. So I'll go ahead and just show you quickly what it kind of looks like, the interference ink on black cardstock, and then move on to stencil number two. For this one, I wanted to bring in some more of that kind of yellow color. I was imagining these flowers looking a bit like poppies in my head. I love poppies. So while again, it does look red, it will actually reflect yellow when I'm all done stenciling. So I'll go ahead and stencil through those. And then for the leaves, I'm starting with ripe mango, which again looks kind of golden yellow, but will be green when I finish. And finally, lavender fields, where it looks purple. But again, when I'm all done, I will show you here the reveal. It actually looks green on the black cardstock. These interference ink pads are so fun and really cool to play with on different mediums. And I really love the subtle shimmer it gives on this black cardstock. We're moving on to the better press. So I'm grabbing a sheet of cotton card panels. This is porcelain in A2 in size. Somehow I got black ink on this piece of cardstock. I don't know what I did, but it won't matter because the way I place my plates onto the system, you won't be able to tell because I will just recycle that piece of white cardstock. So here is my system. You can see it's well loved. I don't really care that there's ink all over it. Um, you can get some archival ink remover, I believe, to keep it clean, but I don't mind. So I place my plates onto the Better Press system. It's magnetic, so it holds those plates in place. And then I'm following the grid on the top plate to add my Better Press cotton cardstock, and I'm keeping it in place with some repositionable tape. And I made sure to not put tape where it will accidentally overlap with a plate. I'm using a black ink to ink up my butterflies and my sentiment. And then I'll go ahead and run this through my die cut machine to press onto the cardstock. Here you can see those pretty butterflies and that fun sentiment. But I'm going to do a little bit of watercoloring. I'm only going to do three butterflies, so I'm just going to watercolor three today and I'll save the rest for a future project. But the die does cut them all out at one time, so we'll go ahead and die cut them all out, but that's no problem. I can always color them later. 
I decided to go with an orange color because I wanted to match the orange of the flowers and also I thought they would look kind of like monarch butterflies or painted lady butterflies so I just sprayed some water onto my glass mat and I have a paintbrush and I'm just picking up the water from the glass mat and getting my watercolor pencil saturated with water until I was happy with how much ink I had on my paintbrush. I'm going to paint in these three butterflies, just slowly adding the color. I'm doing my best to not get too much of my watercolor orange on top of the black. I don't do a perfect job, but that's okay. That's the fun of a handmade card, but I'm just coloring them in as delicately as I can. Once all three are colored in, I'll go ahead and grab the coordinating dies from the press plate set as well as the die for the sentiment and I'll use that repositionable tape again to keep the die in place so I can run it through my die cut machine. I did three butterflies for this card because they are going to be what covers my twinkle lights through my card so I just needed three for the three LEDs. So now that all of the card prep is done, let's start assembling. I'm going to trim my panel to be slightly smaller than A2. It already measures 4 inches wide, so I trimmed it down to 5 and a quarter. I'm going to use a white card base for my project, so I'll go ahead and get that cut down and scored and folded. It is top folding, but you can recreate this card on your own with whatever type of fold that you like. I'm grabbing some thick foam as my go-to way of piercing my holes is just to place my cardstock onto a piece of really thick foam and grab a piercing tool to punch through the paper. So I'm figuring out my layout. I know I want my sentiment kind of centered and a little bit higher on the card and then I will place my butterflies so it looks like they're landing on the flowers in the background. I'm grabbing my piercing tool and I'm just going to hover over where the body of the butterfly is and then pierce through my background. So I'll do that for all three butterflies and set them aside. Next I'll grab a pencil and I'm going to trace the inside of the holes. I was originally thinking of attaching the LEDs to the background but I'm going to change my mind later on so I didn't really need to do this step but it helps me know where those LEDs are going to be placed and then I wanted to figure out where I wanted my push button to be. So I got it in place. I'm going to use a magnet to help hold my card base in place because I kept moving both my card base and my card front out of the way when I was trying to indicate where the push needed to go on the card base. I'm grabbing a piece of double-sided adhesive and I'm just going to apply that to the back of my battery pack. I'm going to at attach this right to the card base and I'm just going to make sure that the push button lines up where I want my push button to go. It doesn't really matter the angle or the rest of my battery pack. It just needs to be towards the center of the card so I can hide it with my uh, card front. So now you'll see I was going to attach the LEDs to the card base but I thought I would just put them right up through the holes of the background because I will be attaching my butterflies to the front of the card base and I wanted to make sure I could get as much of that light shining through as possible. So I'm just placing the LED through the hole and using some clear scotch tape to keep that LED and wiring in place. So I'll do that for all three. And then when I'm done, I will get out my world's best foam tape so I can start adding foam adhesive to the back of my panel. I want to make sure that I can completely cover all four sides of my panel and a little bit in, in the inside, you'll see in just a moment, to make sure there's a lot of stability for my card front. So I don't have a ton of room where my battery pack is, so I'm just going to trim that foam in half so it's a little bit thinner and I'll place that right where I know the battery pack will be butted up against that foam tape. And then I'll just use the regular size all the rest around the card. Um, I'm going to add, like I said, a couple pieces in the middle just to add some extra stability. Now I want to make sure my wires kind of stay in place while I'm attaching my card front. So I'm just using a piece of clear tape to attach those wires onto the card base. It's kind of hard to see but I just wanted to show you a quick look. I had already peeled off all of the release paper off the foam before I did that, so all I had to do was just place the card front onto the card base to finish off the guts part of my light up card. 
Now to decorate, I'm going to grab some foam adhesive. I'm grabbing some thinner foam adhesive. This is one millimeter thick from scrapbook.com. I wanted thinner foam since my card base is already thick enough with the world's best foam tape. So just a little bit of thin foam to add the butterflies. And I'm going to press the push button so I know where the LED is and make sure it lights up to the body of my butterflies. So I'll go ahead and attach all three of those butterflies and then I will also add my sentiment with the same thickness of foam adhesive and get it centered onto my card. Now for the push button, I had this little circle that I had already die cut with the uh, pear, pear Blossom Press Stamp and Die Bundle. It has one of the kind of star looking images from the stamp set embossed on black cardstock. So I'm just going to use this for my card. It's not super obvious that the receiver needs to push here, but it does add a little something so my card receiver knows that it's interactive. I did film this during the day, so I turned off my <laughs> craft lights, and you can see the LEDs glowing here, but it's definitely more exciting when it's a little darker in the room. But I hope you enjoyed this process, and you'll try some of these twinkle lights for your own projects. Here are a couple close-ups, and let me know what you think about the twinkle lights and the interference ink pads. Have you used them before? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Here's some more inspiration for you to check out. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye!